What's up, family? It's your boy, Kirk, and we are back for another live edition of How It All Works. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to some. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Wherever you are in your day today, we just want to say a word of thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. This is the time to do the shout outs. If you came because you have somebody that's on the panel, let them know, show them love in the comment section even now. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us who you are connected to. Or if you are just one of our How It All Works um, family, our regulars, uh, we, we, can't, we can't say enough about how much we appreciate you taking this journey with us. For the inquisitive, for those who always want to dabble, this is the show for you. And today we have a panel of web constructors. <laughs> the their title is probably more uh, web designers than web constructors, but these are the folks who get it done. They, they're the, the architects of the digital cities that we have been living in throughout, throughout this pandemic and even further. And so we're gonna talk to them. We're gonna talk about how it all works. We're gonna talk about what, 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 pit, what fits together. How, how does being a web desire, designer fit into the grand scheme of things? So without any further ado, let's bring in our panel. Let's get it. All right, here we go. Everybody's unmuted. Yes, good, good. So our panel is here. We've got one or two comments coming in already. My boy Carvin CJ, what's good from Maryland? Yes, indeed. Um, want to again just give a, a shout out to my, my my guy my boy oliver marcel for creating that beat for me that we played during the intro that's that joint is fire uh, always gets me pumped up and ready for the show so it's it's dual purpose it's not just a good groove <laughs> it's medicine it's medicine of uh, it's like my, my pre-show routine anyway um, I want to go around the, the room go around the digital room if you will and do some introductions we're going to start with the lovely lady right next to me, and we'll make our way around to uh, Mr. Calendar on the bottom. Go ahead. Um, this is Kanique with Composition. Hi, this is uh, Kiki with Kiki360 Design. Nice. Steven Adetumbi here with Profound Pixels. Profound Pixels. And, and rounded it out, I am Ian Calendar with Calendar Lab. Calendar Lab. So. 
These are our <laughs> panel for today. This, these are our web designers. These are the folks who get it done. And we are going to kick things off by asking them the question that we always start with. And that is to describe for our viewers all that goes into a website. Okay, so, you know, domain, there's hosting, there's CMS, there's templates, there's content, there's updates, security, all this other stuff. That, that all that goes into a website, but how does it all work? Um, not everybody at once, but anybody that wants to dive in, if you want to take any piece of that question, feel free. Well, I would say, number one, content is king. That's what I tell all my clients. The first thing they need to do, make sure you have all your content written out exactly how you want to say it on your website. Content is king. Without content, you don't have anything. Mm, that's good. Mm. Content is king. Content. I'm, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I'm big on imagery. Like, you have to have professional photos uh, yes. for your site or stock photos for your site. Yeah. People love to try to send you the pictures from their <laughs> phone or their Instagram. Like, yep. <laughs> get it professionally yeah. done. Is, is that what we're hearing? Get it, get it professionally done. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I want to steal from, uh, from Kanique's comment. Uh, content, have something to say, have a good product have a strategy, or at least be in search of that. That should be the first thing mm. uh, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like saying, I want to, I want a podium, but I don't, I don't have a speaker. Right. And, <laughs> no. and so, so yes, yeah, so have something to say, have a good product. And, nice. uh, and then, you know, the, the website, all that stuff will fall into place. Yeah. Good. good. So, yeah, you guys, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but definitely content is king. Um, but I will also piggyback the imagery. I think that's, also important you know a lot of customers a lot of clients you'll look at another website and you'll say oh wow this website is amazing i want my website to look just like that mm -hmm. and then you have a picture from <laughs> a website 15 years ago mm -hmm. and it's that small mm -hmm. yeah. it's not going to look amazing so yeah. no the combination no. of content and i would include the imagery with that content you got to have that in order to have in order to tell your story um you can't tell your story effectively without those things Nice. Listen, Definitely. we've got we got a couple people watching here. We got BT. We know BT's out west in California. We got Rosalind Armstrong. She's watching from Toronto. Just want to say a word of thanks. We got we got some people joining in with us. I want to stay with this question for just a second longer because I I, I believe that the viewers, um, I think they've they've heard you. I think they've listened. Uh, content is king. You know, imagery kind of falls under the umbrella of content. Mm -hmm. I think. But, but tell our viewers how it works. So what is a domain? Um, why does a website require hosting? What is the host doing? <laughs> treat, well, treat, us, I, treat us like we're dumb. <laughs> well, I, well, I can tell you how I kind of um, explain it to my clients. Is, Please. Is that your domain is kind of like your mailbox and your address of your house. There you right? Exactly. And then your hosting is your house, right? Mm -hmm. And that is where all your content there are many times that I'll have a client and like they have, they be like, yes, I have everything and I have my domain name and they think they have their hosting mm -hmm. or when it comes time to renew, they was like, do I really need to renew that? Can I just renew my domain name? And it's like, no, all the content is actually in the hosting. So I kind of explain that your hosting account is kind of like your house. It has all your data, the way your house mm -hmm. looks, how you painted it, everything that you put in there, your books, your bed, everything is in your house. It's in your hosting account. And your domain name is just your address where people can find you. So exactly what I was gonna say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mailbox. Okay, I get it. Those are terms I can understand. So that's good. That works for me. But but what? Okay. So when you say when you say uh, hosting, uh, what? So then what's the next step? Okay, now I've got my my domain. I, I know what I want my website to be. Um, I've got my content. Uh, went and got a professional photographer. Uh, we had a couple of events. We got event photography done. We got, we have a video. We got my content, right? So um, I've got my hosting, right? And and for those who don't have hosting, but you've got a web idea, I'm just putting a little pin here that somebody who's watching today is going to win one year of web hosting from DreamHost. So stay tuned for those details a little later. But for our for 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 our panel, now I've got my hosting. I've, what's my next step? I would say that's where the strategy kind of comes in. 
you know, you want to start, um, and probably the strategy kind of went into deciding your, your domain name, that, that kind of can play into it. Mm-hmm. But then you got to start strategizing, you know, who is it that I'm going to be speaking to and, um, and what's the best way to speak to them, right? Because okay. that's going to uh, guide your strategy for what you're going to build and it's going to guide your strategy for possibly how you're going to build it. I, I, I think that's phenomenal. I think that you're giving you're almost giving away too much, man. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. No, but that's that's that is critical. Um, some you know, there's a saying that says, "If you build it, they will come." How many of you have found that to be true? Like, I've got a website now. No. Is everybody going to come to my website now? Is- no, you gotta have that strategy. <laughs> yes, you gotta have it. Is you gotta have a strategy? But then I find I what I send all my clients after I finish their website. I have a document that's called. You have a website now. What? Now and it's what? what you do now that you built that website. Yes. So just because you built it does not mean they will come. So we try to educate our clients on mm. branding yourself for the internet, for the whole web in general, and that kind of helps with SEO and how you show up. So you ah. brand for the web mm-hmm. when you build your website. So. Yeah. Now, so you. So my. I mean, yeah. that's perfect. Perfect. I mean, we're we're stepping all into all my other questions at this point because I was. I was going to say late one of my later questions is you know with the advent of things like wix and yeah. some of these easy website builders is have you found that the need or demand for web designers has gone down and i think you guys have already answered that and the reason why i'm saying that is because <laughs> the strategy piece is not something that somebody's going to just know right off the top mm-hmm. um, yes it, definitely and then and then those tools are good to an extent but they have limitations themselves. One of the things I, uh, we have for our, uh, our next question before we get into the construction stories, and, and Ian, I'm gonna throw this to you first. Uh, what is search engine optimization? So you said you said SEO a second ago, um, Lakeisha. So w- we wanna dive in a little further. What is it and why is it important? And then um, after we've touched on that for a second or two, we wanna, wanna dive into how can how can I monetize my website? You know, what do I need to do? What are the steps? What's the process that I would need to go through in order to monetize my website? Let's start with SEO and then we'll move to monetization. So, so as Kirk mentioned, SEO, which means search engine optimization. Um, a lot of us, you know, as consumers, we Google things. Right. Um, I don't know if anyone who uses Bing, you know, if you're out there. <laughs> More power to you. To you, right. <laughs> but, but most of us, if we're looking for something on the internet, we'll usually say, go Google it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you go to Google, you type in something and you get the search results. Right? So, say, for example, you're in Huntsville, you know, because most of us are in Huntsville, you go and you type in a web design or web developing company or web agency in Huntsville, and a list will come up. Mm-hmm. Now, depending on how all of us on the call have optimized our sites, one of us may show up or one of us may not. It's true. Um, now, depending on the area that you're in, <laughs> right? Not you may not be a web developer. You're in some other some other industry. When you have your des- your web developer design or develop your website for you, you also have to think about okay, if someone is looking for my business, what will they be searching for? Um, I'm in the hair care industry or I'm in a restaurant industry or whatever industry that you're in, you have to think if my consumers are looking for me, if my customers are looking for me, what would they look for? And then you optimize your website with that type of content, with that information. So that when you go to Google and you Google it, Mm. right, that information shows up. Now, something else lately, um, since we have mobile phones and stuff like that, Right. Another factor you want to factor in is your address. So if you're a local business, right, you can also optimize where your business is. So yeah. you're in Huntsville and they type in web design. If you also optimize where your business is using um, Google, then you also get pushed up the rank. So there's, yeah. there's, there's a number of things you can do, but it all boils down to when you develop your site, when you talk to your developer, hopefully they encourage you to kind of tailor your information mm-hmm. so that when someone looks for you, they find you with that main, you know, the main information that they will be looking for. Nice. So on the on the on the high level, um, that's what SEO kind of addresses. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else want to dive in? 
See, I might diverge just a little bit from that, just from the topic, but I just wanted to point something out. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and maybe it's like a broken record. Maybe this is all I'll have to say today. But notice how, as he was talking, how he oriented everything based on the user, the person you're targeting. Yes. And I think that that's a theme that you should, as we're talking about, we should keep in mind, just kind of notice that every time that we're talking, we'll be thinking about the user. Because a lot mm -hmm. of times we come approaching the website and we're like, oh, I want to put this and I want to put that and I want to put this. But when, I think an essential key for everything you're doing through web, web design, and that's included with search engine optimization, right. is you've got to think about the user. What, are, what is their approach? What are they coming to do? How would you, instead of thinking, oh, I want to show this and I want to show that, think mm -hmm. about where would, what kind of instance would a person be in when they're looking for your product or when they need your product? Where, right. where are they in their garden? Are they on the road? What are they looking for? What keywords are they looking for? And those are the things that you want to shape all of your strategy around. So I think that that's a key thing because um, sometimes I come to clients and they're not thinking about their user. They're thinking about all the things they want to dump on their website. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and they're not they're not thinking about, well, that doesn't match how people live their lives. Wow. So please keep that in your head uh, as you're listening to us. Yeah. No, that's, that's very critical. Very critical. The, str the strategy, the strategy is going to tailor, it's going to basically book and the entire experience is going mm -hmm. to determine, you know, which, 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 which route you take. Um, mm -hmm. you, when, when you talk about strategy, I don't know if anybody else wanted to touch any further on SEO, but when you talk about strategy, Steve-O, um, sorry, Steve, Steven. <laughs> Steve-O works. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is old habits. Anyway, yeah. when, when you talk about uh, strategy, it almost sounds like you're getting a little bit into UX. Mm -hmm. Um, um, because you, you're, you're trying to make sure that that user's experience from the time they search for your site to the time they land on your page to the time that they um, submit their information for you to make a contact, you want that entire process to be tailored mm -hmm. towards your specific target audience. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, 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 that's a huge thing for people to know and to consider. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the technical folks. There's a, there's a lot of behavioral things that go into a successful launch of a website. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can put up a website, but mm -hmm. that's why I said successful. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Successful. Yeah. Um, did anybody else want to touch on it? See SEO, but I do because I, I want to see if we can get to monetization. Uh, um, well, I was going to piggyback off of uh, the user experience and yes. say that when we build a, a website, we kind of look at it as from a top down version. When a user comes to your site, what you want them to do is, is that you should be able from the very beginning of the site, get, an, get the information of who that site is, right? Mm -hmm. And then from that point on, the second should be, they should be able to get a little bit more information about you, that's makes you that makes you wanna go, okay, I wanna know more, right? And then that third step should be, after you give them more it is, what are your services um, that they can get from you? And they go, okay, we got a good product. And then you wanna give them that, um, maybe some testimonials or something, yeah, yeah. right? So that yeah. you can have that, that, that proof that, hey, we are a good company. And after that it is, bring them in and contact us. Yes. So you kind of take them through that user experience of the flow of how somebody's mind works when they come to your site to get to know who you are, what you have, what other people have said about you to give you that social mm -hmm. proof, that reputation. And then after that, let's get them where they can contact you or, you know, click through and find some more information, but hopefully they'll be calling you by the end they get to the there end of go. the site. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah, totally agree with that. And I would say along with what um, Kiki just said, you want to make sure that you have a lot of call to actions on your site mm -hmm. so people have a way to contact you as easily as possible. If you don't have a call to action or a form on your site, then how are they going to communicate with you? So yeah, yeah. I just want to suggest that. It's, it sounds to me like um, all of the, the web design companies represented on the panel um, really take the approach of partnering with the client, um, really trying to put their best foot forward. And so th th tell me, has, how does that approach work for, for all of you? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say that if your client feels like you have their best interests at heart, then it's really easy for them to kind of open up and give you more information um, and not feel like, okay, you're just trying to do it because you're just trying to get paid. Mm -hmm. More so you're trying to do it so that you can provide value for them. And it, 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 as long as you're getting that message across to them that you're providing value in your service to them and their business mm. and let them know that, hey, if your business grows, 
my business grows. grows. If your business not. does not grow, mine doesn't, doesn't grow. right? So ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to grow your exactly. business so that my business will benefit from your business growing. So it's not that's like amazing stuff. I, I'm pretty certain that some of our viewers are wondering, man, I thought they were going to get into the nuts and bolts of the things, the ones and zeros. But some of the stuff that we're talking about is is all things that are right within your wheelhouse. These are all things that are in your grasp that you can readily understand and 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 probably implement, put into practice. So let's talk about monetization real quick before we go into the construction stories. OK, so who wants to touch on monetization? <laughs> Not everybody at once. <laughs> it's 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 a it's a fickle beast. It is. Yeah, that's, that's why everybody's kind of like, mm. yeah. there's, there's no there's no like you know, one recipe or one remedy for this thing. But you, but when you say but, monetization, monetization, what uh, in what setting are you you talking about in general? Because that's a that's a big that's a big animal, right? Like, are you talking about so monetizing, a, uh, say, like an Instagram, like modeling or? or oh, no, 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 no. For a website. So let's say mm. I have a blog. Mm. I've got I, I post something on there two times a week mm. um, and it's my own content. I'm, let's say I, um, I'm a dog shearer and I post, you know, tips on how to groom dogs mm. and I post something twice a week. How do I monetize that? How do I get ads on there? How do I implement all the different steps to be able to monetize my site? I guess one of the, the first platforms you can look into using is Google AdWords. Um, Google AdWords mm -hmm. is a way of, you know, placing some monetization on your sites, um, setting up setting up account with them. And I know that you can set up a budget with them based on how much you want to spend and so forth. Right. right. So Google AdWords is one. And then you yeah, can you I think you use affiliates, um, you affiliate. do affiliate ads to, to get yeah. your uh, to get compensation that way. And the, and, the, and the affiliate ads are based on visits, right? Mm -hmm. Site visits. Well, yeah, visits and clicks. traffic. Clicks. It could be, yes, yeah, clicks. business and clicks. 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 And, and, and just to make that point, uh, if, if people on don't know what affiliate ads okay. are, that's basically um, if there is a business or service that you use for yourself as a company and you see that there, there's value to it, then a lot of times they'll give you an opportunity to advertise their business on your website. Mm -hmm. Right. And because you're advertising their business on your website, you get a little bit of that advertising money back to you. And that, um, and that's, so that's the power of, of affiliate links. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you weren't too sure what that was. Yeah, no. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect explanation. In fact, in fact, in fact, we are um, using an affiliate link for DreamHost, who is the sponsor for today's show. And so we will. Somewhere in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so, we're going to tell you some of the details that you need to do in order to be entered or eligible, I should say, for one year of hosting with DreamHost. So if you've got an idea, you've got a site that you want to get off the ground, you've already purchased the, the domain name, you just need a hosting place, we, uh, we've already worked it out with DreamHost to give some lucky viewer one year of hosting with DreamHost. So stay tuned for that. We're going to dive into our construction stories. I have been waiting for this. I have been waiting for this. So who wants to go first is probably the question. Hmm. OK, I, that generally never goes well. So I'm just going to pick myself. <laughs> you can put me and, first. Well, that's perfect oh because God. the site that I have up first is yours. Uh -huh. And so in this section of, of the show, each one of our panelists is going to tell us about a build, a web build that they did and something unique or something that they've experienced either in the process of building that site or in the process of maintaining the site, as you will hear from them in their own words. So we're going to go with Stephen Adetumbi first and please tell us what we're looking at. You're looking at a uh, law firm website. Um, it, it's, uh, it was started out. Uh, it's a, um, someone that I know reached out to me. He's starting up his law firm. Uh, it was initially was just a you know a few um, just a few a few like just a few people working in his office. I think it was someone in his family, and then he had like one employee working for him. But he was getting to the place where he was ready to start you know growing a little bit more, right? Because initially his website was built, I think it was on Wix, mm -hmm. right? And and I'll, I'll just throw in a little thing. Um, sometimes when clients come to me, I'll actually suggest Wix or um, 
or Squarespace if they have the bandwidth to do that. Because um, sometimes when you're getting started, just getting something off the ground um, and having something up there uh, can be beneficial. You don't really need to spend a whole lot of money, you know, just kind of start out lean and then grow from there. But he was at the place where he was ready to grow. He needed to say something very specific and he needed a more robust website. So, um, so you know, I, I took, you know, did, went through these things. We went through a strategy, got an idea of who his customers were and uh, we built th this website. And, you know, law firm websites are not the, let's just say that they're not the, uh, the model of beauty. If you, even some of the best ones aren't, <laughs> you know, you, you, won't, you won't go to a law firm website for inspiration. And, and so we wanted to really uh, change that, make this a beautiful place. Mm. You know, uh, their customers uh, were either families and it kind of, kind of, you know, pivoted to making it more, uh, making his website more to uh, elderly. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get a place that was warm, uh, a, web, a web presence that was warm, that felt inviting, but also had a sense of, um, you know, stability, had a sense of uh, credibility and, nice. um, and spoke to legacy. Because a lot of people are coming here to do wills, trusts. So we wanted to have something that spoke to legacy, spoke to a, a, a warm, rich legacy, and, um, and then kind, because that was kind of like a boutique shop. So we're balancing all of these, um, these different objectives and, and that's where I'm helping, I was helping the client kind of work through that. And uh, over the course of having this website up, number of years, we've done some updates. You know, he, he has quite the robust. He has like 25, 30 um, employees working for him now. And nice. he's literally one of the uh, top uh, law firms uh, um, in this field in, in uh, the city in which he works. He's one of the top rated. And that's, that goes primarily to having a good product but he also puts up a good face. And, um, and so that's what you're kind of looking at here. I guess if nice. you have any other questions, you can, you can let me know. Nice. And if you do have questions, um, just feel free to type them into the comment section and we will pull those in where we can. This, this looks good. Anybody, um, anybody, any panel, panel members wanted to say anything about the site before we move on? It looks really good, really clean. I really love the, the imagery that you have in there. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I had to kind of work through with the client is coming up with some standards for imagery, and I think mm -hmm. you guys kind of covered that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, how you know it can it can go south very quickly if you're you know just getting the first result that comes off of Google and then uploading that to your website. Yeah. And right. um, so we have to have a standard. Um, here we're using a lot of stock photography, right. but um, you know we've kind of kind of set some guidelines, you yeah. know, and walk through with the client, you know, here's some things that are going to make your website, you know, pictures that look like this. And so they've been managing it and they've been keeping it up. And they're one of the clients that have done a good job uh, with that. Some of the clients uh, have not <laughs> done so good a job. That's why I'm not, uh, I didn't send you the link to them. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's phenomenal. We're going to, we're going to move to uh, composition, compositions, the site that Composition submitted for us to review is Oakwood University Church. Please refresh that page for me real quick. Okay, let's refresh. Um, so my story is a little bit different. This has more to do with knowing when to scale up. So back in January, we redesigned the OUC website. And this was before COVID happened. So we had about 3,000 users that would come on to the live stream every week. Mm -hmm. And the first week you know, of when they had the COVID situation where everyone had to stay at home, um, the site still functioned well. But I'm telling you, the very next week, I'm not sure what Oakwood did with their marketing or their media. The site completely went down because there were so many people hitting the site that Saturday. Um, so there was pretty much nothing I could do about that other than, you know, waiting it out. And then from there, we decided, okay, we're not going to just go to a VPS, a virtual private server. We're going to just jump straight to a dedicated server because we were anticipating that more users will be coming to our site. So what we ended up doing was within that week, we reached out to our hosting provider and said, okay, we need to switch to a dedicated server. Um, that process did not start until the Monday. And until that week 
And if you know, hosting providers right now are struggling to deal with all the different tickets that they're receiving. So I was yeah. really worried that we would not be able to get it moved in that short time frame, but God was with us and we actually got it moved. I was up until 3 a.m. that next Saturday trying to make the last minute changes, Mercy. tweaking everything just to make sure that the site would be up. And I'm telling you, that next, that same Saturday, I think it jumped from the usual 3K to about 15K that Saturday. Mm -hmm. And consistently since the last couple of weeks, as you know, Oakwood has really hit the headlines, especially with the virtual choir. We This past month alone, we had about 14K users. We had about 25K um, visits and about 50K page views. So we had to definitely scale up and yeah. <laughs> So, so in this, in this is a in scenario where you are doing maintenance. You're actually maintaining the site for them. Yeah, that also right? maintaining. Yeah. Okay. So, you, it, not just build, but also uh, mm -hmm. maintaining. So, yeah. Steve, Stephen mentioned that the client, in his case, uh, maintains the sites themselves. But there are some scenarios where web designers will not only build it, but will maintain the site for you. Any yeah. any comments from the panel? I'm looking in the comments to see if anybody else is, is, is asking anything. I don't see any questions there, but any comments from the panel before we move on? That's it's a phenomenal a, story. It's a jump in sight, man. That's 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 what you want mm -hmm. in this yeah. situation. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd agree. Um, and you touched on having to go to a dedicated server. Again, I guess I'm the teacher in me comes out. If people don't understand what that means, a lot of times when you have a website, you may share a server and the server is basically the mall where all your sites are. Your sites mm -hmm. are like your stores in a mall. Mm -hmm. and the server is the mall, and you have your site as part of that mall in that one big, mm -hmm. that one big mall. Now, mm -hmm. if you want, if your site becomes like Oakwood and it just blows up, and it's that's awesome for a business, right? But mm -hmm. your two, your little store in that mall is no longer sufficient. Mm -hmm. So now you need to go get your own mall. Mm -hmm. right? So you, know, you have your own, Open has its own mall mm -hmm. and it's right. running inside from its own mall. So that's mm -hmm. kind of an analogy there to understand what mm -hmm. dedicated versus yeah. um, <laughs> a shared, mm -hmm. the, the other the other version would be a shared site where you're mm -hmm. on a server with multiple businesses, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. Very so, good. Yeah. Glad glad you added that, Ian. That's that's good. Yeah. That's good. In fact, you're, you're up next. So we're just going to have you continue talking. And so the site that uh, Calendar Lab submitted is tbe.com teledyne brown engineering go ahead sir so um teledyne brown engineering is uh one of the big engineering firms here in cummings research park uh, i believe cummings research park is the second largest research park in the country mm -hmm. um if, if i'm not mistaken i don't know if anyone has changed that um and teledyne brown is the company that started that its president started that some years back um so i i I was honored with the opportunity to work on this project um, from start to finish. And what they basically needed um, was a more up-to-date website. The, the websites that they had in the past were not mobile friendly. Mm -hmm. um, they were not touch friendly. And they were not able to update the content on their sites. So it's more of a corporate site. So it's not as flashy. Yeah, um, makes sense. We, we, I had, I, I had to fight them just to get to the point we are because mm -hmm. when you're dealing with corporate clients, a lot of times they they don't want to be the ones leading the charge. Mm -hmm. If someone else does it, then they may follow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were successful in kind of pushing to this to this point um, to kind of get a different corporate view out for them. So nice. they're able to manage that site 100 percent without me. Mm -hmm. um, there's no need for me to get involved. They, everything that you see is current. They're able to update their videos, nice. uh, their press releases, um, their, their imagery, um, their background imagery, the way you see, you know, behind that, what we do, they're right. able to go and update things like that. So it's built in a way where I set it and they just take it and run with they it. Take it and run with it. There's okay. no interaction with me whatsoever. Um, they are running on a dedicated server. Um, because this this is a more corporate environment, so they would have Absolutely. to do that. Yeah. So you know, it really gives them the flexibility to do business the way they see fit. Um, and for them, they just have one call to action at the front 
of their their site when you when you get there. Right. So that's that's that learn more. And for them, they really want you to get to their press releases. That's the biggest that's thing it. for them. Yeah, I want people is. to get to our most recent press release. When you come there, you click it, you can get to the press releases, and that's how they drive their business nice. um, from the website. Otherwise, you know, it's more so um, the kind of corporate structure when they are bidding on projects. It's, it's different. It's a lot more intricate. You can't do a lot of that online, mm -hmm. um, but you can do some of it like this, pointing to press releases and et cetera um, from the online website. So it's, it's real simple, real clean. Um, again, the last time they updated their site, I think had to be maybe early 2000s. Um, wow. So being able to update that for them and, and kind of bring them up bring, yeah. to modern times, <laughs> um, yeah, was, was really cool. So yeah, for yeah. Them, yeah that's, that's pretty much it for them. That's a, um, that's a lifetime in web yeah. years, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm curious to know how long did that project take you to complete? Because that site is huge. Uh, that project, geez, um, I think it took about a year. Okay. It's okay. okay. I, I think it took about a year to do. Okay. Um, I actually needed some, some help with it, um, you know, to get some extra resources because yeah. it's just so large. Mm -hmm. And... That strategy piece that we talked about in the, the first part of the call, that was a big part of the project because mm -hmm. you had to you had to go to the stakeholders and let them know, okay, this is how we want to present your site. Mm -hmm. um, now, what are the things that you want to present? Right. And getting them to agree with, with what they want to present yeah. is one of the <laughs> hardest parts of the project. Yes. And, and when you get in a corporate environment with all the high-level stakeholders, mm -hmm. That's where it becomes challenging. So that can always mm -hmm. push a project out mm -hmm. while they're negotiating. Okay, we want yeah. this there, we want that, yeah. we want it becomes very challenging. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're able to get through it. Mm -hmm. Um, not as quickly as we would have liked because of you know, sometimes you just gotta wait for your stakeholders. Yeah. And that's another thing with your site. Yeah. If 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 I'm dealing with a business, I have to wait for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. if you have to work through some things with yeah. your your executives, etc. If you're a larger company, mm -hmm. then we have to wait for you. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're ready, we just come in and we, we get the we get the yes. job done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. That's that's well pretty said. much how that's it is it. for us. Well yeah. said. Well said. Well, any other comments from the panel on this site? Uh, Looks we, good. We, yep. we Looks will. Good. Um, we've got one more construction story for you before we have a little station identification break. I love that now, by the way. Sorry. What'd you say? I love the nav. Thanks, thanks. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it as well. Um, so, Lakeisha Willard, Kiki 360 Designs. This is the stuff that they've submitted, and we're going to give it, hand it over to you. All righty. So, this is um, Connected Church, um, and it was a site redesign. Um, of course, the old site is not live anymore, but if you can imagine a site that might have been done in the 90s. We're not going to even say it was done in 2000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say that's when we started out with that. So that's basically like starting from scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so, but they were rebranding um, and um, they were, they had an old site, but then they were kind of starting a new life with a new pastor um, mm -hmm. and new things and getting their, their own church and a new place and things like that. So um, with them, um, they just wanted every, they wanted to make it feel like the name of the church is connected. So it wanted to have that we're all together family feeling. Yes. Um, this project was actually kind of large because they ended up um, adding on and doing like, we actually branded them with the, you know, their Bible study, the men's and the women's and the couples and the community, oh, wow. the different oh, logos wow. for all yeah. of those to blend in with their uh, original grand um original brand logo so we mm -hmm. kind of kept it to go in together um the, uh, we actually have a partnership um in doing their site so just like their events and things they create those graphics and those they add those to the calendar uh mm -hmm. themselves a lot of stuff that they update themselves um and of course if there's anything that they can't do miss ramona can't do then she calls me and she's like keith can you help me with it sure. so um and so that's what that's what we do um and through there it was just like um for their side, it was getting to know them, um, knowing all the ministries that they have so that you could quickly get to where you want it to go. So if you were a couple or, um, you know, if you're in the, the youth and keeping up with their events and, of course, giving is important. 
Um, so their yeah. site is actually oh, still goodness. growing a little bit and changing. Um, mm -hmm. um, so they're still adding some things on. I think there might be a page in that it still says coming soon. But like this project, it, it keeps growing. So it's like been going on for what, like three years now? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. started out, I think it started out in about 2017. So okay. it's still, we're still working on it, still growing it um, there. I mean, nice. a, a website is uh, is kind of a li living organism. It, right. it, it will yeah. grow. It lives. It breathes. Yeah. It, it it has its ebbs and flows. Um, mm -hmm. It it needs to be updated. It needs to be refreshed. It, it can't stay static. You know, mm -hmm. for, in order mm -hmm. for it to really hit the mark and really be impactful and do the job that it needs to do, it's it's got mm -hmm. to go through some changes. So, mm -hmm. um, it's it's good when you can have those kinds of partnerships. That's that's really really cool. And um, lo love what you've done with that. Um, the branding is really good as well. Mm. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. from, um, any any other comments from the panel on that on that one? Yeah, that's nice. really great. Yeah, yeah, I would like the use of video. Um, yes, that's yeah. awesome as well. Um, yeah. it it really adds an extra pop. Mm -hmm. You're able to, you yeah, know, we, yeah. There. Most sites we try to add a little bit of of animation, some movement to give it some flow and some life in a site. So yeah. and video and video just like content is king. Video is to do content king. Yes, to it add is. To yes. yes, it is. Right. Yes, it is. So whenever there's a professional video, you can get one done or have one. We always recommend that. You will Helps help. with SEO. Yeah. <laughs> you will help. Your, you will help your web designer if you have a, a professional video. Okay. Mm -hmm. You heard that from the panel here. Yes. So make sure when you're doing your next project, you keep that in mind. Um, even when you have your events. Um, capture those 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 moments, those clips. Put them mm -hmm. all together. Put them aside. Then somebody can compile those into something really meaningful. And mm -hmm. you never know; it could really make the difference in your next web project. Mm -hmm. We are going to take a quick break from discussion, and we're going to tackle uh, two quick things. One is that last week we had the panel um, photographers delight. We had a panel of photographers on and we talked to them about a number of different photography type things, just like we're doing today with our web designers. Um, we had Flickr Pro was uh, one year of Flickr Pro was the, the giveaway. But unfortunately, there was a couple of different things that one a person needed to do to be eligible for the giveaway. And several people did let's say 70% of those things, <laughs> but didn't do all of the things. Um, so we don't actually have somebody to give Flickr uh, one year of Flickr Pro away to. That's a, that's a sad thing. Ah, that's a that's sad. Is terrible. That's, that's sad. Yeah. So, but if you were one of those people that did half of the steps, just go ahead and complete them and email us at info at kirknugentspeaks.com and we will get that out to you. Um, and you'll be eligible for that. Uh, but we want, we also today, our host, our, our sponsor, I should say, is DreamHost, and they'll be uh, giving the lucky viewer one year of web hosting. So the only thing that you've got to do, now there's two other requirements. We're gonna start with those. You do have to be a current follower of our Facebook page, and the, and the URL is there, facebook.com slash how it all works. You also need to be a subscriber on the YouTube page and the link is there. And in fact, if you're watching on YouTube right now, the button is right below. So if you haven't done that already, please click subscribe. <laughs> okay. So there's that. Those two pieces need to be in place. You have to be a current follower, current subscriber. But to, in order to be entered into the drawing for one year of web hosting with DreamHost, we're just asking that you would tell us about the project. Submit what your website name is and a one to two sentence description of what you're going to be doing to info at kirknugentspeaks.com and we you will be entered in for the random selection and we'll announce who is the winner of one year of web of one year of hosting with dreamhost next time on how it all works if you're wondering what next week's episode is going to look like we we have the answer for you we're going to be talking about behind the scenes of TV, movie, and production. And we've got a, a panel of folks who work in various capacities, whether it's in a newsroom, whether it's in a university space, teaching students how to get into TV and movie production, or those that are actually in on the ground, in the space, working for places like Netflix, for Apple TV, or I should say Apple Plus, right? Um, and then for, you know, 
various different projects. Some of them you may have heard of, some of them you may not have, but we, we ask that you stay tuned for next time and um, join us for that next episode. We're going to play a quick video from DreamHost, kind of just showing you a little bit about what they, are, what they do and what you know, their edge on the market is. At DreamHost, we know your website's more than just code. It's more than a domain. It's more than just a website. Your website is a vision. Your vision. It's your passion. Your livelihood. Your website is your business. Your brand. It's your story. Maybe even your dream. It's your purpose. Your purpose. That's why we do everything we can to make sure that your purpose is our purpose. Our purpose. We make sure your website is fast. Super fast. Secure. Like actually secure. And always up. Always up. Because that's what matters. This stuff matters. To your visitors, to search engines, to you. It matters to your success. And when you're stuck, we've got your back. With award-winning support. Available to you any time of day, any time of night. Real humans like me and him are always here to help. Always. Not to mention, we've got over 20 years of experience in the industry. Officially recommended by WordPress.org. Passionate about privacy. And we're independently owned. It's no wonder. It's no wonder. Over 1.5 million websites. 1.5 million? Host with DreamHost. So whatever your purpose. Whatever your dream. DreamHost. 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 Helps you get there. Right. Yeah. Okay. One year of one year of hosting with DreamHost. One year of hosting with DreamHost. We have one more. We have time for one more question before we jump into the plug your whole hustle section and we close out today's episode. Um, that question is <laughs> trying to pick one that I we haven't already covered because we have to cover a good amount. But this, this question I think we haven't really spoken to, and it is for the aspiring web designers panel, we're throwing this to all of you, anybody can jump, chime in, but for aspiring web designers, somebody who's watching now live or who may be catching the replay later on, um, who want to know what, what the basic guidance would be for them to get into the field. What, how, how would they methodically progress toward the goal of becoming a web designer? I would say practice, just just do it um, and give it away for free. If you have friends that want a website, do them a website. If you have family that needs a website, do them a website. Do it, practice, make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, but just do it and don't give up. And then learn as much as you possibly can. Yeah, I definitely agree with all that you just said because that's exactly what I was gonna say. Volunteer your services, make websites for friends and family. And one of the things you want to make sure you do in that process is communicate and practice good customer service. Um, I've gotten so many clients just because their webmaster or web person is not a good communicator. Mm -hmm. They don't communicate with them. So if you want to keep, if you want to get a client and you want to keep that client, practice good customer service and communication skills. Uh, I've got a couple of things I'll chime in with. Um, on the design end, one thing you can do is uh, look at your favorite website and think about what is it that makes that website my favorite website? Why do I like it? You know, think deep. Think about like um, what's the what's the frame of mind that I have when I come into this website? What does it look like? What is the spacing like? The padding? You know, the typography? What things make this website successful? Look at all of your favorite websites and and glean from that. Learn from that. Um, in fact, when I'm working on a website myself, what I like to do is uh, I, I like to use Pinterest. Pinterest is one of my favorite go-to places. And I'll make a board and I'll say, what are some successful websites in maybe adjacent, um, you know, uh, in, in adjacent like business fields, uh, mm -hmm. competitors, what are some of the successful websites? And I'll put them all on that board. And sometimes I'll say, okay, these are all the things in the competitors. And then here's another, column, I'll make another board and I'll say, where are some, some other websites and maybe related but not the same thing that are kind of, you know, or I can get a few ideas from them to kind of communicate what the client is doing. And I'll, I'll put that in there and I'll show the client and say, which, which views, which looks work, you know, which kind of things are, are kind of speaking to you. 
So to kind of summarize that, it, stealing a little bit, right? <laughs> like steal yeah. good ideas. Yeah. If you see a good idea here yeah. or a good idea there, steal it and look mm -hmm. at it and put things together. And that's what creativity is all about. It's about yeah. making connections. So uh, stealing is, is um, you know, smart stealing is, is, a, is a part of that. And, yeah. um, and then of course, um, uh, you know, uh, learning HTML and CSS, those things will help you. Um, yes. So get comfortable with those. Get comfortable, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so I will add, um, in, in addition to everything that everyone else says, I agree, um, use the free tools out there. So you can really get started using Wix. Like mm -hmm. you can like get in Wix and Wix will allow you to get familiar with some of that HTML, some of the CSS stuff, all some of the concepts, right? And you just dabble so that when you actually start going into the code, start looking at HTML, start looking at CSS, you understand the correlation between, okay, this box here is like CSS border over here or the, 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 the margin over here, you kind of understand the relation by using the free tools to kind of do your, your first web design for your cousin or your dad or your grandparent or somebody, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not able to do the HTML. And then you kind of gradually build from there. Um, now, some people stay with those free programs and they use Wix forever and they become Wix professionals, mm -hmm. right? Professionals, mm -hmm. right. Um, but you, you can also start there because it, it gives you an, uh, a beginning if you have interest to kind of get used to some of the technology on the back end. I, I'll put I, one more thing off of that is, is if you can find ways to speed up your workflow, yeah. that's going to be helpful because building a website can take a long time. Yes. So sometimes there are Wix, there are other builders that you can use. Um, just yeah. think through the business of how you can speed up that process. The, the mm -hmm. one thing I... <laughs> I, the, the question that I know I have received in preparation for the show was, is anyone on the panel looking for uh, somebody to shadow them? <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I, and, and you don't have to answer that. But what, the reason why I bring up the question is because I, that was one of the things that I think is also critical, is just finding somebody that's in the field and mm -hmm. shadowing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I doubt if, you know, they're not going to tell you their secret sauce, but they will show you the ropes. They'll, they'll bring you along, and, and in some cases, maybe they will show you their secret sauce, but whatever it is, well, if you can find somebody that's in that field, that's going to be go a long way to understanding the ins and outs and getting a practical sense of what it's like to really work in that space. So um, with that said, we're at the 10-minute mark, and I want to make Ooh. sure everybody is given an opportunity to plug their hustle. Now, you've heard the names of their businesses. But I'm giving them a, 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 a little bit of time. We'll start with uh, Calendar Lab, and we're just going to make our way around the circle the other way. Um, but yeah, we're going to give everybody a little bit of time to go through and get all those pieces uh, and to let people know what, where they can find them, how they can follow them, and if there's any packages or any you know, summer deals or whatever. You never can tell. Uh, this may, may be a good time to, to talk with them about that. All right, so Ian, let's talk to us about Calendar Lab. Yeah, so Calendar Lab. Uh, I don't have a tag yet, but it's coming. That's my tag. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you can find me. That so so on the screen right now, you'll see a lot of my personal contact. Um, but you can also find me at Calendar Lab on all of those. For okay. Twitter, you just go to at Calendar Labs with an S, oh, and of course CalendarLab.com, the website. You can find me at all of those locations. If you come to me personally, ask me. Of course, I'll accept your business or your questions <laughs> if you want to shadow me. Um, I don't mind being a teacher um, or mentor, so, you know, no issues there for me. I think the more of us that teach, it raises the value of the profession. Um, the more professionals that we have, the better our overall industry will be. So Excellent. I'm open to teaching, and I would admonish everyone on the call. Teach, 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 because the better developers we have, the better our industry is overall, the better our services. Excellent. Excellent. Steven. Yes, uh, let's see what we're looking profound at here. Profound pixels, profound pixels. Let's build okay. something profound. Okay, yeah, I would just say the, uh, the best way, if you're interested in websites, um, you know, interested in looking at a website, looking at building a website with me and with uh, the squad that I work with, is just to shoot me a line um, on my website. It's very simple, you'll see some of my work, and there's a contact form at the bottom, so you can go ahead and shoot me uh, a line that way. 
Um, you know, LinkedIn also works. I check that. Uh, Facebook is uh, a lot of traffic going on there. So uh, your, your wait time might be a little bit more <laughs> in some of the other social media areas. It's good but, to know. Yeah, I, yeah. You said something? No, I said just good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, <laughs> right. But it, of course, I, I like working with, um, uh, you know, my business works with um, small to medium, small corporations that are growing, that you're trying to get into the big leagues that's that's my sweet spot um, and and our team is getting you into the big leagues and um, so yeah just uh, profoundpixels.com excellent 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 uh, Kiki 360 designs hey all right um I can be found anywhere and everywhere and if you google <laughs> web designers in Huntsville I should come up <laughs> Um, but I'm I'm Kiki360 Design everywhere or Kiki360. Literally, you type it in, you find me. The best way to get in contact with me is literally just call 256 468 6995. I will answer the phone. Um, I, I do, I like to teach also. Um, we try to keep interns around here um, every year between um, AM, Oakwood, and UAH. Um, so, yep, if you're interested in and you want to come in and you want to shadow, we'd love to have you. We give my secret sauce out because my secret sauce is me. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, so come experience the secret sauce. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And last but not least, composition. Um, Kanique with composition. We do website creation, maintenance consultant, media consultant, live stream consultant as well. Um, you can find us on those platforms that you see on the screen. Um, for the How It All Works viewers, we are offering for the month of June only a 10% discount if you use the code HIAW. Um, feel free to just shoot me an email. Um, I'll be happy to respond. And we are also open to tutoring or having some interns come through. Um, things are getting busy, so I'd love to have some extra hands on deck. Nice. I wish I, I wish I had typed up that code but to have it to put on the screen. H I A W, um, the acronym for how it all works. H I A W, folks. If you if you want that, I want to uh, touch on one last thing here before we close it out, and that is last week we announced that Travis Lender was the winner from our first episode, and he won one year subscription of Ecam Pro. Um, and this is just a, a quick slide that we're throwing up here. Uh, just proof in the pudding, essentially letting you guys know that these giveaways that we're doing is not a it's, it's not a fluke. Uh, it's, we're not dangling the carrot. It's real. Um, I have spoken to him, and he has activated his subscription. He's using that at his church now, and that, that's something that we feel really good about. So uh, these these are vendors that are were able to work with us through this program, through this platform, through this uh, through these means to be able to push their content. I mean, Ecam is a really great product. Um, but by giving a one away for free, it is one of the ways that they're able to get the word out there that it is a platform that can be used. Same thing for Flickr Pro and same thing for DreamHost. DreamHost is one of the bigger hosting companies. I know somebody asked in the chat, you know, how do they compare to GoDaddy and some of the others? I know Bluehost is big as well. There's, there's several. I mean, there's, there's multiple hosts out there. Uh, but DreamHost is one of the big players as well. And mm -hmm. they're in that space. And, and they're one of the ones that was willing to give a year of hosting away for free. So make sure you send, send an email to info at kirkmanionspeaks.com with basically the site name and a one to two sentence description of what you're going to do with that site. And you will be entered for the random drawing for one year of hosting through DreamHost. With that said, we are going to close it out a couple minutes early, but that's okay. Um, we thank you so much for your comments. We thank you so much for your engagement. And we can't say enough to, of, of thanks to our panel of distinguished guests, of web designers, professionals in their own right, business owners. Uh, somebody, should, some, somebody should be clapping for a set of black business owners, especially in today's day and age. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot, of, uh, a lot of, of, of black business lists are being put together out there. So we hope that we see yeah. every last one of your businesses on those lists. Uh, this, is, this is a phenomenal discussion. I learned something. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that in the course of the program, somewhere, somehow, 
you got a little step closer to figuring out how it all works. But that's it. We're going to play a little outro and we will sign out. Um.